Hi everyone, my name is Jakub and I'm a developer relations engineer for capturing reality. This is the third part of our tutorial series covering drone mapping in reality capture. In this one, we'll go over creating ortho projections, contours, measurements, and ortho mosaic editing. All the tools that we'll use in this video have their own in depth tutorials. The links are also in the description. Without any further ado, let's jump in. We finished the last video by creating the cross sections from the model without artificial objects. Let's rename the model to cross sections. And let's delete model number one. Now we are going to create a top view ortho projection of the cleaned model. The ortho projection tool can be activated from the scene 3D tools tab, the workflow tab, or the shortcut is F11. The tool generates the colored projection, digital surface model and digital terrain model in one step. Now we need to change a couple of settings. We want to create a map, so we need the type to be from the top. Map GPS type always makes an ortho projection in the WGS84 coordinate system, which is good to export a KMZ file. In our case, we want to use a different coordinate system that we specified in the very beginning. Next, I will expand this info panel and make sure that the coordinate system is set correctly. So in our case, yes, it's fine. Next, we will change the rendering method. We can either render a true ortho projection of a colored or textured model, or we can use mosaicing. Image mosaicing doesn't require the model to be textured or colored. It seamlessly stitches certain parts of the input photos into a huge image projected on the digital surface model or the digital terrain model. For mosaicing, we have two options. Image mosaicing general for non-aerial datasets and image mosaicing aerial for a drone dataset like in our case. Next is the ortho pixel size. If we click on estimate, we get the best possible resolution, which is around 5 mm. But for our needs, 5 cm will be good enough. When we type in 0.05 meters in the ortho pixel size, the ortho projections width and height will also be updated. Another setting worth mentioning is down here. Generate digital terrain model is automatically turned on when the model has an existing classification. The classification was created with the AI classify tool in the last video. Here we can choose the classification for the DTM. In our case, we only have the single classification number zero. The main reason why I'm mentioning all of this is that the image mosaicing works best on digital terrain models. Digital surface models will cause unwanted double projections. Now all that will be left to do is to click on render. The ortho projection is rendered. Now we can zoom in with the mouse scroll wheel and pan with the left mouse button. Besides the color layer, we can switch between the digital surface model and the digital terrain model. We will go to the Ortho 2D View Context tab, and here we can change the input layer. This is the digital surface model, and this is the digital terrain model without artificial objects. We can also toggle slope shading on and off. If the ortho projection type was set to mosaicing, we also get another input layer called mosaicing. It displays the entire mosaicing scheme in the 2D view. It can also be displayed as an overlay. Let's switch back to the image layer and click on seam lines. We can even select individual tiles. We can see exactly which part of the image was used for the tile. Those were the basics of image mosaicing. We'll also need to cover mosaic editing, but we will get back to it once we look at the new drawing tools. Up next are the contours. We can generate contours for a selected ortho projection, and the contours will share the same coordinate system as the ortho projection. The contours tool is located in the ortho 2D tools right here. To activate it, we will simply click on it and this opens the Contours tool panel paired with this projection. Now let's take a look at the settings. First we have the pixel type. We can choose between altitude and depth. We are creating maps, so as surveyors we are interested in the altitude in this case. Next we have the input layer. We can choose between the DSM or the DTM. DTM option is not always available, only if it was generated, which it was in our case. So that is why we prefer it. We want contours to be generated from pure terrain without any artificial objects. Units are pre-filled according to the used projection and its coordinate system. It cannot be changed, and this is not present if the ortho projection is not georeferenced. Then we have interval, which determines the vertical spacing between contours. Right now it is set to 1 meter. The final settings are for minimum and maximum. These numbers are pre-filled according to the minimum and maximum value of the ortho projection, but we can change them if we would like to. The altitude of the first contour is equal to the minimum, and the maximum value is just the upper bounds. If we are happy with the settings, we just press Compute. 
Every fifth contour is highlighted, and if it's long enough, it will also have a label. So, for example, this contour has 250 meters above sea level. In the Ortho 2D tab, it is possible to toggle between black and white colors of the contours. White is the default for the image layer, and black is the default for the DSM and DTM layer. Now we are going to take a look at area and volume measurement tools. I'll disable the visibility of the contours in the 1DS. Like in the case of contours, measurements work on a selected ortho projection. As before, the tools can be found in the Ortho 2D tools. To activate them, we will click on Measure. I want to calculate the area and volume of this pile over here. We can use one of the tools to draw a shape around the pile. I prefer the Polygon tool, so I will use it right now. To start drawing, I will just left-click to place the first vertex of the polygon, and I will continue to draw the polygon around the shape like this. To close the shape, I can double-click, or when I move the mouse cursor to the first vertex, it will snap to it, and now just a single left mouse click will suffice. After closing the shape, a new panel appeared in the 1DS, and a new 2D view appeared displaying the height profile along the shape's boundary. In the panel, we can see the name of the region and its color. Both can be changed if we want to. Next we have the volume info and area info. The area info is self-explanatory. It contains the calculated 2D area and 3D area. The volume is calculated with respect to something we call the base plane. There are multiple options for the base plane. Each method has its pros and cons, so they are suited for various situations. When it is set to none, the volume will not be calculated. This is good if you want only the calculated area or edit the region, so it doesn't recalculate the part every time you move a single vertex. Interpolated creates a base surface by interpolating the terrain in the selected shape. Flat and minimum and maximum height method has two base planes. The bottom plane is at the lowest point of the shape boundary, and the top is at the highest. Sometimes we do not want the top or the bottom, but manually specify the height. That is exactly what flat at user defined height enables us to do. It works amazingly well with the height profile, where you can get the size of any point along the boundary. Finally, there is the best fit plane. The best fit plane uses linear regression to calculate the flat plane from the boundary of the shape. For now, I will keep it at interpolated. Next, we have the calculated cut volume and fit volume. Everything above the base plane is considered as part of the cut volume. Everything that is below the base plane is considered as part of the fill volume. There is an option to visualize the base plane in 3D. So let's turn it on and let's open the 3D view. Currently, the base plane type is set to interpolated. And we can see that the base plane is pretty reasonable in this case. It's time to take a look at the height profile. Let's switch the right view to 2D to display the profile. The height profile has two axes, position along the boundary and height. Right now, their scale is 1 to 1, but we can change the scale of the height with the mouse scroll wheel, like this. Notice that when we move the mouse cursor over the height profile, we can also see a cross moving along the line in the left 2D view. Simultaneously, the height profile shows the exact position and height of the cross. We can use it to measure the height of this vertex. Its height is 216 and 99. Now we can use this value for the custom base plane height. So I will switch the base plane type to flat at user defined height. And I will use this value. Now let's switch the height profile to the 3D view. And now we can see that the base plane is at the height of this vertex. This can be very useful for various height measurements. Now it's time to take a look at how we can edit the ortho mosaic. I will change my layout back to 1 plus 1 by pressing Alt 3. And let's change the input layer from DTM to image. We'll try to edit this shack over here. To activate the tool, we go to the ortho 2D tools and click on Enhance Mosaic. It works similarly to the volume and surface measurements. First, we'll draw a polygon around the shack like this. After the polygon is closed, a new special 2D scene view is opened. It is associated with the region. Under the mosaic in 1DS, we have a new mosaicing node, and it contains our new region. The new 2DS contains three groups of images, active, suggested, and disabled. Active images are the ones that are being used for the region right now. The algorithm picked suggested images, and they can replace the currently projected images. The disabled section is just for us to store images that we do not want to consider anymore. Images have to be dragged and dropped between the groups. 
First, let's move the currently active images to disabled by drag and dropping them. When we hover the mouse cursor over the suggested images, they are previewed in the region. Let's pick one of them, for example this one, and drag it over to the active group. One tip. If we had multiple original images in the active group like this, double left clicking an image will override all of them and move them to the disabled group. It looks good enough, so let's apply it. To apply it, let's hit Bake. The Bake button is located in the selected mosaicing region or in the Mosaic Editor view tab. We can choose if we want the projection to be applied on the DSM or the DTM. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the preferred method is the DTM. DSM can cause double projections. Now let's click on Bake and after a while we will see the result. Ortho Mosaic editing will conclude this part of the tutorial series. In this video we use the Ortho Projection tool to create the Aerial Ortho Mosaic, Digital Surface and Digital Terrain models. Then we use the Digital Terrain model to generate contours and to make volume and area measurements. In the end we use the Enhanced Mosaic tool to edit the colored Ortho Mosaic. Thank you all so much for watching this video. In the next and last video of this series, we will export the results, generate reports, and import the results to Cloud Compare and QGIS. Just a reminder that all the tutorials from this series are listed in the description below. Feel free to drop your questions or thoughts in the comments. See you in the next one.